Hi everyone, Donut here. Today we're going to talk about a 15-hour standoff that took place last week involving four people dead, two police officers shot and injured, hundreds of shots being fired, and some pretty crazy body camera footage. This whole incident started as a domestic violence. Police say that it probably happened after the victim tried to break up with the suspect. Domestic violence incidents are, of course, probably one of the most dangerous calls for a police officer outside of, like, an active shooter or a robbery in progress. The 47-year-old suspect shot and killed his estranged girlfriend 39-year-old Sandra White, who was nine months pregnant at the time. Reports state that he also might have taken the 16-year-old son of Sandra White hostage. This may or may not have been true, but the boy's body was also found in the home when all this was done and over with. Police received calls of a woman bleeding profusely inside of a garage at the incident scene. The victim's sister came over to check on her and found her laying in the garage with blood everywhere. Police arrived on scene and see her laying inside of the garage. Given the exigent circumstances of we have to get in there and help her right now, Henry County, Georgia police officer Taylor Webb boots the front Front door in. 232 radio. Blood in the driveway, females visible inside, unresponsive. We're about to force entry. You ready, Foster? He was immediately shot in the chest and the hip by the gunman who was waiting for police on the staircase to the left. His body camera falls off and he scrambles to find cover while the suspect continues to lay down fire. The officer who was behind Officer Webb stops and backs up a little bit on the front porch and calls out where the gunman is. This could have been very bad for this officer because he's in front of some windows and he about gets lit up too. Just He's on it. He's on the arm. Um, no, don't go around. He's on the arm. Um, the arm. Um, dr- oh, shit. Watch out. A few seconds later, Officer Keegan Merritt runs up to cover the front of the house from a tree in the front yard. Ah! Yes! Shot fired. Yeah, right here. Shot fired. I'm pretty shot fired. Yeah, I'm, I'm hit. I'm hit. Now, I don't know where the hell the gunman was for this right here. I don't see him in the doorway, I don't see him in the windows, but somehow he gets a shot off and hits Officer Merritt in the hand. I'm guessing the suspect might have been in one of the upper rooms that we can't see because that's where they ultimately find him. Officer Merritt, with a bullet in his hand, retreats back to cover, but oh crap, Officer Webb is still inside of the house with a bullet in his hip. It turns out when he got ambushed coming through the front door, he hightailed it to the garage, so now he's in the garage laying beside Sandra White's body. The officers outside of the garage see him in there and they say, hell no, we're getting you out right now. So they kick the shit out of the garage door until Officer Webb can make a slick little dive to safety. Pull the arm, pull the arm. Pull the chain, Webb. Pull the chain. Yo, come on, come on, Webb. Got cut. His body camera was still inside the house, and you can hear the gunman telling police, Don't come in here. I have a hostage. I have 30 round clips. I got a hostage. Don't come in. I got a lot of shots. Got a lot of shots. I got 30 round clips in here. I ain't coming nowhere. Because there was no reason to believe that the 16-year-old hostage inside of the house was dead, negotiations begin, and they lasted 15 hours. SWAT shows up, and I'm guessing they evacuated all the surrounding houses and took cover, which was probably a good idea because the suspect fired hundreds of shots from the house at police. Police didn't return fire the whole time out of fear of hitting the 16-year-old. Towards the end of the standoff, though, they did shoot some gas into the house to try and force the guy out. When they finally did breach, they found the 16-year-old dead with gun wounds, and the gunman had committed suicide. Due to his criminal past, he wasn't even supposed to have a gun in the first place. The two officers who were shot underwent surgery, and they should be released soon if they haven't been released already. There's not really much more you can say about it. It's just a crappy situation all around, and I mean, hopefully we can all take something away from it tactics-wise. Well, everyone, this is Donut. Of course, with this being a shooting, it's going to be age-restricted, and ads are going to be removed, so if you want to help support the channel, you can do so by coming over to twitch.tv slash donutoperator. As soon as this video is released, I'll be over there. We can hang out, talk about some stuff. Patreon, donutoperator.com for super sweet merch. Other than that, please have a fantastic day.